So we've looked at the wiring and we've looked at the lights. For our last pre-Maker Faire video, we're going to talk about the prettiest way to control all these things. HA Dashboard. There are a couple of new things that I did in this dashboard that I didn't have in the first HA Dashboard video that I did. First is the weather widget. AppDaemon has a built-in weather widget. That widget gets all of its information from a service called Dark Sky. To get Dark Sky set up, you need to go to their website and register. That'll generate an API key that you're gonna need for your configuration.yaml file. This is how the entry in my configuration.yaml file looks. Create a new sensor. The platform is Dark Sky. Then paste the API key that we just got from the Dark Sky website. Then make a list of all the monitored conditions that you want to use. You can find the whole long list of conditions that you can monitor on the Dark Sky website under the response format link. You can get a crazy amount of information from Dark Sky. The app daemon weather widget uses these parameters by default. So if you want to use the weather widget and you don't want any blank spaces, you need to make sure to include at least these parameters. Then you can include more if you want. You can use all this information from Dark Sky without using the weather widget. You just have to set up an individual sensor widget for each of the parameters that you want to use. Since we're talking about the weather, there's a really cool way to include a radar image in your dashboard. Thanks to Michael Boyd for showing me how to do this. This is how the entry in the dashboard file should look. I made mine three by two because I needed it to be kind of big so that I could see it. You just need to put your region in the area where mine says Provo, Utah. There's a way to go to wxug.com, go to Maps and Radar, select your region, and then choose the Animation option, then grab the Image link in the bottom right corner. Or you can do what I did, which was just guess at a city and a state near you until you find one that works. Once again, my way is not the only way. Sometimes it's not even close to the right way. Now that we know what weather's coming, let's take a look at traffic. I don't know exactly how this might work for you in your area, but for us, here in Utah, we can access public traffic cameras with a URL. I set up the iframe widget to grab an image from five different traffic cameras that show my commute to work, and they update every 60 seconds. So while I'm eating breakfast, I can take a look at the traffic and see how much of my audiobook I'm gonna get done before I get to work. With the iframe widget, you can grab any image with a URL. There are ways to see cameras in your house too. Home Assistant supports a bunch of different cameras. I use Blink, Arlo, and Foscam, but I'm still searching for the best Home Assistant camera. Someday I'll do a more detailed video about cameras. Regardless of which camera you use, you'll find the entity ID for your camera on the Home Assistant States page. That entity ID is really all you need to get your camera image on the dashboard. I'm making a new dashboard just to be able to see all my cameras in one place. So I make a new file called cameras.dash in my app daemon dashboards folder. The main arguments section at the top is the same as it is in my other dashboard. So I can just copy and paste it. Then I need to add a widget entry for each camera. You can call each widget whatever you like. The widget type is camera. Whatever you put for title will show up at the bottom of the image, but title is optional. You don't have to have it if you don't want it. Entity picture is the really important part. That's what really makes this whole thing work. The first part is the IP address for your Home Assistant Pi then API forward slash camera proxy, and then the entity ID of your camera. If you're using a password for Home Assistant, you put that at the end as API password. This will be different for you if you're using SSL encryption. You'll need to use the DNS name instead of the IP address. The last entry you see here uses the navigate widget to create a button that will open up my main dashboard page. I also made a similar button on my main dashboard page that references this camera dashboard, so I can easily switch back and forth by clicking those buttons. Now you can arrange your cameras in your layout. The dashes and blank spaces tell the layout to skip a line so that the camera images don't overlap. The camera widget is only meant to show images and not video. You can specify a refresh time in the dashboard and the dashboard will grab a new image from Home Assistant at that interval. But if the image in Home Assistant hasn't changed, then the dashboard will just keep showing you the same image. So in order to get frequently refreshed images, you'll also have to make sure that your images are refreshing in Home Assistant. And how that works will depend on which cameras you're using. 
If you do have a live video feed, you may be able to see it in the dashboard by using the navigate button and pointing to the URL of your video stream. That should work. Should. In trying to come up with a way to show presence detection for our Maker Faire display, I found an easy Bluetooth-based method for knowing who's home. It requires that you're using a Raspberry Pi 3 for your Home Assistant instance, and it's easiest if you're running HassIO. I was actually quite surprised at how easy it was to set up. There's a HassIO add-on that enables the Bluetooth chip on the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you do is install and start that add-on. Then you need to add a few lines to your configuration.yaml file that look like this. When you restart Home Assistant, you'll find a new entry in your known devices.yaml file. Or if you didn't have one before, now you'll have a known devices.yaml file. And in it, you'll find the device or devices that were detected by your Raspberry Pi's Bluetooth. If the MAC address in the known devices file starts with a BT, then you know it worked. Honestly, I don't fully understand how it works. Somehow, you don't have to pair devices. They just get detected. And I don't know what the range limit is either. I don't believe you can set up zones. So you can know if someone is home or not home, but you won't know necessarily if they're at work or at school or at the mall. But for as easy as it was to set up, I like it. I did discover a little bit of a problem with this Bluetooth presence detection method while we were at the Maker Faire. Any Bluetooth device that is within range of your Pi when it restarts will get added to your Home Assistant instance as a new device. So when we set up our booth and fired up the Pi, it added an entity for every phone that was within range. I didn't actually count all the devices that got added, but it looked to me like at least 20 or 30. But if you're not taking your Home Assistant Pi to a Maker Faire or some other public place, you probably won't have that problem. Now, if you do have a lot of guests at your house, you may need to go into your configuration and delete unintended entities from time to time. Well, that's all for now. The Maker Faire was a great success. We got to meet a lot of people, met up with some old friends, made some new friends, and introduced DIY home automation to a lot of new folks who had no idea what it was before. Mission accomplished. And the best part? We found out there's going to be another Maker Faire nearby in Utah in September. I've already registered. Hopefully, we'll see you there. If you've ever left a comment or asked a question, you should know I'm pretty good at responding, but I don't have all the answers. If you get stuck, check out the Home Assistant forums and the Discord chat. There's a lot of good folks willing to help noobs like us. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.